You know, one of the best things about collecting and playing retro games is often discovering for the first time a hidden gem from 20 or 30 years ago. And for the Atari 2600, that is especially true. There were just hundreds and hundreds of games made by all kinds of people and in all kinds of genres, some of which have completely disappeared. But another great thing about retro gaming is the homebrew scene. Now, homebrew has been around since, well, the 2600 has been around, really. But in 2010, it was really brought more into the mainstream light with the release of Halo 2600, released by Atari Age at the 2010 Classic Gaming Expo in Las Vegas. As you can see, it actually comes on a real 2600 cartridge. The game was developed by Ed Fries, who was the former vice president of game publishing at Microsoft, and as such was definitely involved with Bungie Studios. Being inspired by programming stories of the 2600, he got to work on his own game, which ended up being this, Halo 2600. And yes, it does have blessings from Bungie to exist. I got mine on the second or third production run by contacting Al at Atari Age. I think I paid about $20 for it, which, when you consider it comes on a real cartridge, isn't that bad. All you need is a real 2600, a 7800, or something that will play VCS cartridges, and of course you could just play it on an emulator like Stella for free. The game starts off with a cool little title screen of the Halo, I suppose, and an Atari 2600 version of the Halo theme. You can press the joystick button at any time and you will take control of Master Chief. And the game starts with you outside and with no weapons. Walk Master Chief upwards to the next screen using his little Fred Flintstone legs and grab the gun. The next screen over you'll see some kind of an enemy, I assume a grunt or something, I really don't know. And you can press the fire button to shoot directly forward. One hit will kill pretty much anything, so all you really have to do is press fire and dodge any shots coming your way. The gameplay to me is most reminiscent of, I guess, games like Berserk and Adventure on the 2600. Adventure in the sense that each screen is kind of part of a larger overall map, and Berserk in the sense that you have things firing at you and you have to fire back at them, avoiding shots and stuff like that. Although you can't fire at an angle, so that does kind of limit the gameplay a bit. Your enemies can, though. You have a couple of lives, and once they're gone, you're dead. Grab the key in the first area, and you will open the door to the second area. A Covenant base, complete with Covenant holiday decor and new elite enemies. So it's a new area, but it's the same exact thing. Just don't get killed. Shoot things if you want to. There's no score, so I guess you really don't have to kill them. Grab another gun, grab a shield, go outside and kill more stuff. Or don't. Basically, you're just walking through a really simple maze, and you don't really have to do anything. So in that sense, the gameplay is extremely limited. I guess you're supposed to shoot stuff. It does help, but in theory, I guess you could just get through the entire thing without having to at all. The last aspects of gameplay that I noticed are some boots to pick up, allowing you to walk faster, and the icy areas where you will keep moving even if you stop moving. You make your way through the icy area, then back inside, and then to the final boss. The only boss. The Covenant Ship. And that's it! That's the game. All 64 screens are over. Really, there's just not much to Halo 2600. Mostly it's just got its attention because of the name that's attached to it. It's a Halo game outside of the Xbox, and Bungie was okay with it. I mean, that's kind of a big deal. But really, as far as homebrews go, it's pretty weak. I've seen much, much better homebrew games. I guess as far as this style goes, I just prefer games like Berserk instead. It's not bad, it's well made, the controls work, everything is solid, all that good stuff, there's just not much to it. Yes, it's intense, but once you get through it once, why would you want to go back? You basically just run through a series of mazy levels, collect some guns, shoot some aliens, and then shoot the last alien and the game's over. Which, I guess, if you really think about it, that's pretty much all Halo is when you boil it right down to the basics. Except that this is over in about 15 minutes. Whatever the case, it's an interesting curiosity, and I'm happy to have it in my collection, especially because of the stares that it gets. Like, is this a real cartridge? Can you actually play that? Well, yes, you can. It's Halo 2600, one of the highest profile homebrew games in recent years, and even though there's not much to it, it's at least worth giving it a shot online. <laughs>